Do you remember when Yacht Club Games promised us a bunch of playable Boss Knight characters when we threw a ton of money at them in a Kickstarter? Well, the first of those is finally here with Shovel Knight Plague of Shadows. It's a brand new adventure and a challenge mode. That's a free update, keyword free, update for Shovel Knight. Did Yacht Club Games deliver on their sophomore effort? Well, let's take a look. Now, in order to be able to access Plague of Shadows and the new challenge mode, you first need to beat Shovel Knight's adventure, which hopefully you've done, or Yacht Club Games has said they'll provide a cheat code to unlock it for you. If you played Shovel Knight, you might remember Plague Knight from the Explodatorium. Now, however, he's a little bit smaller, a bit cuter, and a tad more vulnerable, at least emotionally. Almost makes you want to pinch those little plague mask cheeks. <coughs> plague Knight is a villain after all, but he comes across as someone that's likable with his own flaws and quirks. Now with this free update, Yacht Club Games could have easily just slapped on a Plague Knight sprite over Shovel Knight, maybe added some bombs to him, and called it a day. But in terms of the quality we've come to expect from Yacht Club Games, they didn't. Once again, they went all out. Sure, on paper, Plague of Shadows kind of sounds boring. It takes place mostly in the same levels, has the same bosses primarily. But then again, who uses paper? Uh, this game boils down to ditching the mighty shovel in exchange for bombs that can use his weapons and for new found mobility and jumping. Plus, you interact with all the characters in the game in a new way, in a new light, from something that's a bit of a behind the scenes angle that still fits into the original Shovel Knight storyline. In truth, with no disrespect to Shovel Knight, Plague of Shadows feels like a Shovel Knight badass mode, where you can make short work of obstacles and enemies. Plague Knight blatantly disregards most things that used to be challenging in the original. Thanks to Bomb Bursting, a technique where you charge a bomb and have it explode you upwards or forwards, it's a blast to wildly zoom through sections of levels and this will no doubt seriously lead to some awesome speedruns. There's a ton of jumping options with the double jump plus a bomb burst, or you can jump, bomb burst, and then jump again to gain some control. Or if you're really good, you can chain bomb burst, or you do a bomb burst and the second double jump after. I mean, it's just endless. And hey, about to fall into a pit? Well, never say die and bomb burst right out of it. Even when it looks like you're not about to make a ledge, you can throw a couple more bombs and gain the extra one or two pixels to try to make it. And if you remember all those one-chance treasures in Shovel Knight that required bouncing off an enemy or not digging up too much dirt, well, they're now a thing of the past thanks to Plague Knight's huge vertical reach. Even a quadruple jump is possible thanks to an Arcana item, so you can almost reach the top of the screen. Plague Knight also has the ability to make a mockery of those mini-bosses in the middle of stages and simply jump right over them. And it definitely shows Yacht Club Games has put a lot of thought into the bombers. There's subtle touches, such as being able to charge a bombers between screens, or while a boss is talking, or even that a bombers will make you invulnerable to an enemy attack so you can pass right through them. One word of advice that might save you a lot of trouble, and a lot of cringing, is that if you don't press left and right, you will bombers straight up. And that'll save you a lot of times jumping crazily over platforms. Now granted, you can slow things down a bit and not bombers in some situations. But that's really no fun, and I never really found much of a reason not to, except when I was dying so much that I really had to plan out my route. I mean, Plague Knight does walk slower, and a single jump is shorter than Shovel Knight's. But in a way, I think they did that to encourage you to soar through the air at all times. I did find there was a bit of a learning curve with the controls compared to the original Shovel Knight that you just pick up and play so easily, maybe thanks to DuckTales. But in Plague of Shadows, it does get a bit frustrating at times with stuff that should be simple, that you might die on a lot, such as that little enemy on a ledge in the middle of nowhere. Just persevere in these moments if you're having trouble and know that you'll unlock bombs later on that'll make it easier. Now speaking of these other bombs that you can buy, you'll get such a big arsenal and array of bombs, arcana, and bomb bursts by the end of the game that there's usually a relatively easy solution for every situation. I did end up using a favorite type of explosive by the end of the game, but the levels always nudged me towards switching things up with the case and fuse. By the end of the game, I would say I'd use about 60% of them regularly. Now the funny thing about Plague of Shadows is that they give you so much health in the form of tonics that you can apply, is that I never really died by losing all my health. And if it happened, I'd be like, what, what's going on? Why am I flat on my face? It was rare, normally I'd fall in a pit or fall victim to a boss. Another difference that I noticed, that in Plague of Shadows, thanks to a regenerative magic meter, I would actually use my magic abilities. Well, in Shovel Knight, I'd always conserve them or try to save them for a rainy day, and, you know, I'd never use them. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the levels haven't changed too much, but there are these green cipher coins to collect now that are placed in tricky-to-get areas, generally, so you have to play the levels a bit differently to get them. There are also brand-new cipher coin areas that weren't in the original that mix up the levels for you. 
you know, think of these green coins as the green stars in Super Mario Galaxy 2. Of course, you don't have to get them, but I compulsively go after them and they help you unlock bombs. Yacht Club Games is really considerate because it still counts as collecting one, even if you die immediately afterwards. It would have been a way more frustrating game otherwise if you had to survive some of these crazy cypher coin jumps. Now, while avoiding saying any spoilers like the plague, I will say that I found the Plague of Shadows story better throughout than Shovel Knight's. Uh, but for me at least, the ending doesn't have quite the same high level of payoff as it did in Shovel Knight. I will reiterate though that once again Yacht Club Games has come up with another marvelous and charming story. And besides the awesome single player campaign, there's also now a challenge mode for Shovel Knight and Plague Knight. You'll find a lot of challenge with reduced time, uh, low health restraints, and certain item sets that'll force you to play the game differently than you might normally would helping you become a better Shovel Knight player. Thinking back, these tough time-based challenges remind me of trying to unlock cheat codes in double agent mode in Goldeneye. These extra challenges will really keep you playing Shovel Knight a lot longer this time around. In the end, I had very few complaints about Plague of Shadows. I really had to think hard for any at all. My biggest beef would be to change the relic input type from up an attack to a single button because I kept pressing up while jumping and I'd use a relic and stop my movement and probably just fall to my death. And as I mentioned earlier, there's a bit more of a learning curve and it makes weak enemies lounging around on small platforms pretty dastardly at first until you get more bomb types. I had to wait a while to see a Trout Apple King dance this time. And personally, I had no problem with this, but if you're not big on changing powers in a game like Mega Man, you're not going to like how many times you might be changing bomb options in the alchemy menu screen. I found it super easy and quick in the PC review copy, well, it should be a snap on the Wii U gamepad. You know, despite taking place mostly in the same levels as Shovel Knight, in the end, I not just loved, but I really loved Plague of Shadows, for how much this new adventure feels so fresh, and it's basically a complete brand new game than Shovel Knight. Perhaps we're all better off by getting Plague of Shadows, the Shovel Knight Remix, instead of Shovel Knight 2 right away, where the gameplay might have been pretty similar. In Plague of Shadows, Yacht Club Games has taken those 8-bit memories from my childhood and delivered a fantastic experience probably far better than most of those NES classics. Plague Knight's new adventure just oozes polish and is well worth playing. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned to Game Explained for more on Shovel Knight updates such as the Shovel Knight Amiibo and all things gaming too.